Welcome everybody to another episode of Channel 13. I'm Marcus Brown, your host, Marcus V. Brown. And today we got guests back with us again, second time around, Bishop Leo Lewis Jr. How you doing, sir? I'm good, man. Good. All right. Got to be back. Yeah, good. And you know how I'm doing? Uh, how you doing? I'm doing how super. You doing? <laughs> 13, 13. We're gonna jump right in today. Last okay. time we had we had a uh, a pretty good uh, conversation last time, and right. I I enjoyed our conversation we had. But what I um I wanted to bring you back. I wanted to bring you back. We had a lot of um um a lot of views. A lot of people liked it. I I had people. They didn't put the comments before we start today. We want y'all, if you hear something today you, you disagree with, you agree with, you have something yeah. to say, why don't you leave a comment in there today as we go? Yeah. Why don't you leave a comment? Want you to share it, want you to like it. And if you stick around, watch the whole thing, um, you never know, you know, we might learn something from it, or you may can add something to it in the comments and we'll learn from you. But today, we just wanna um jump right in and I wanna talk about, you know, cause the climate we're in now. Uh, with the political climate and everything. And I'm just looking at our nation and I wanted to talk with you today about, you know, just race in general, our race uh, race situation. And we can start with maybe, you know, racism or race itself in the church. Okay. You know, what's your take on that? Uh, let me see. Let's frame it in a... Do I believe in racism in the <laughs> church or do I believe... Well... Yeah, just what did you take it? How do you see it? Okay, okay. I see it. Um, I see it from two angles. I see race as as it, I'm speaking because I'm I'm black. Okay. So from my from my lens, I see it as as it pertains to us. We as people, we have been conditioned to um, view ourselves a certain type of way. Mm -hmm. um, I think because our historical background. Whether it's good or bad or whether it's right or wrong, it's not even the issue. The issue is everybody in this country or everybody in the world, we only respond according to how we've been brought up. Whatever our community is, whatever our foundations are, um, it produces something that we call the lens. And I teach a lot on the lens in school. And so through our lens is how we view ourselves and how we defend ourselves or how we buy into something. So when it comes to racing to the church, um, I see the African-American church uh, specifically, and it will go to the other counterparts as a group of individuals that views the church as a black thing, a black entity. And I don't know if that makes sense um, to bring clarity to that. I think we're supposed to, be, not I think, the Bible says we are the body of Christ. If we're the body of Christ, then we can't think of the body of Christ as black people. Does it make sense? It makes sense, Bob. So you think that black people think that the, the, the church is I, I, I've the, heard the black church. I heard that yeah, word. The, the way church. the way I've the way I've been conditioned. Okay, and, and it's not bad, but then it's not good either. If you're gonna if you if we're really gonna take on the whole mandate of the kingdom, mm -hmm. the mandate of the kingdom is to go to y'all world to preach the gospel to every creature. Mm -hmm. But when you're so, our lens are so black. I don't think we think that we have a part in the whole world as saving the world. Our our number one objective seemingly has been to go after everything black, to be black in thought, to be black in business. But but don't you think the white people don't do that? Oh yeah, I'm good. Yeah. I do. <laughs> but you just speaking from Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wanna throw them under the bus. I'm gonna throw me under the bus because okay, I'm black. I got you. Yeah. Um and so where I am now, I'm I'm evolving into this mindset of how do I go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature if I'm black with my approach then I'm not going to be able to preach the gospel to every creature. Cause you can't, you, you don't want to be, uh, I have to be black centric, you know, right. black centered. Cause then being black centered, it don't have any, it don't say anything to other cultures. You think? I think it leaves other cultures out. Excludes them. It excludes them. If we're talking about nations, when we talk about nations, the Bible sp speaks of nations a lot. And if we're going to be, uh, if we're going to draw nations, 
I think we're going to have to put on a, a, a nation mentality. Well, or, people, when, when we think about nations, we're going to be thinking about countries, but it also talks about kindreds and it tongues. Kind, it does. It you does. Know what I mean? Your cultures and it your does. language. It does. Everything else. Too. It does. Yeah. Um, I don't know. There's nothing wrong with the black church. I'm black. I'm going to be black forever. I'll pass the black people to Jesus say, come home. But I do believe that we do need to revisit how we present the gospel of Jesus. Okay. Well, what, what, what would be some different approaches that we could take? I, and see, that's where the, that's why I'm gray right now. Um, that's why I'm praying for wisdom on how to, I want to get it right. And I know in getting it right, I don't want nobody to think that I'm saying I don't want to be black. That's not what I'm saying mm -hmm. at all. I, I love being black. I, they, black is what it is. But I do think I need to, for me, I'll say for me, I need to learn from God, not from people, not from philosophy. How do we reach? Is it okay for me to just remain black? And then you're going to send people that are just going to be attracted to this anointing. Or are there areas in my presentation and in my theology and in the word of God where I have to take off one hat and put on a kingdom hat maybe to become more kingdom minded? Does it make sense? Yeah. How, how do you think that like other cultures are doing it? You know, you can find like uh, some of the, you know, white churches or other other races. They'll have a multicultural church yeah. you know or you know what what approach you think they're taking um i don't know i was a part of something a few weeks ago mm -hmm. during the week of the fourth of july i went to pittsburgh and was part of a multicultural ministry um because i do praise and worship because i sing that's my background within the what do you call it the the repertoire of the music for that week it was multicultural multinational although it was and yeah, well, no, I can't say that. it was multicultural or we had a Russian on saxophone. We had a black guy on drums. We had an old Caucasian, <laughs> oh. if you quote unquote, <laughs> heel Billy on guitar. Okay. So it was uh, another, another Canadian on the bass. So that was multicultural. So the music we approached with a multicultural understanding because they knew many nations were coming. You had Africans flying in, you had people from Canada, you had people from London. So all these cultures are coming. And then we had classic white Pentecostals. Wow. So then we had another guy to come up after we did all this multicultural music and he went old school Pentecost tent revival, white people from the okay. South. And camp it, meeting. Camp meeting. And that's what it was. It was a camp. <laughs> exactly. But every nation that was there was extremely blessed. And they were able to buy in to the whole encounter all week because everybody, I think, they felt a part of their. But, you know, you, we people have always been able to come together in music, though. You mm -hmm. know, in music, you know, mm -hmm. uh, blues, jazz, You're gospel. Right. People, come, people come together in music. You know, when I used to. Uh, when I used to be a, 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 a rapper, a Christian rapper, a lot of my fans were white. So, I mean, music music is a great uh, unifier, so to speak. It is. But what about in, in other things, though, it, when it comes to our economics or our, or, or our politics? That's a good question. Or, or, or just, you know, what we believe about leadership type of things, leading our people. What do you think about that? I don't know if I can answer that. <laughs> I can answer. I can say this. I, I'll say this. And it, it would be like an answer, but not an answer. It may be a, a rabbit trail. What I used to have a problem with growing up was this. Mm -hmm. And I never knew this as a child that I was really going to become a leader. Because mm -hmm. for me, I want, I didn't want to be a pastor. Everybody know me. I don't want to be a pastor. Still don't want to be a pastor. <laughs> kind of there, but it is, it is what it is. But my question was, why, when we were preaching the gospel to people, why were we always sent to the projects? Why did we feel like we had to set up tents in the projects? Um, I think because you know people when they think about preaching the gospel, they preach the gospel to the poor. Right. That's what. It, that's what. That's the man. But then, but but, the but then you get a church full of spirit. poor people and you can't support a vision. Right. But you got. But you, we forget about the poor in spirit. Right. And we forget it, about. I think we. Yeah. It yeah. was germane to just uh, huh. tangibility. Um, well, look, I grew up in the projects and right. I, and watch this. Sometimes people come out there. They go. We give away free hot dogs or uh, uh, some old clothes. And when I lived in the project, you know, you had we, we had food, yeah, and we, and we had clothes. So hot you know dogs were the gospel for you, no, no, right? So a lot of a lot of it, you know, we'll we'll come eat a free hot dog, but you know, but it wasn't a need that we really had a lot of times. You know, sometimes uh, people that want people to give them something, they'll take it, whether they need it or not. But 
Uh, but that's not going to be the thing that really, in my mind, opens. So perhaps, so perhaps you just answered the question. Mm -hmm. The question is how, or the question I uh, posed earlier, how do we become, or how do I become more global? And you just answered, you said you need to give people what they really need. Right. And I think that's what Jesus did. Mm -hmm. Jesus gave people what they needed. He didn't go pass out. He didn't take the two fish and the five loaves because we're gonna gather some people because we right. got two. He he gave them he two gave, fish they and loaves because they need to, yeah. And they were you, traveling. They were following this man. <laughs> but here's here's the thing. This is what I believe. Reason we don't have the multicultural experience sometime in our church is because uh, when we reach out to multicultural to to different people, do we uh, do we want to bring them in to make them us, or we want them to be? Like, see, I'm reason I say that because. I think I said we want Hispanic people in the church. Mm -hmm. Well, can we communicate well with Hispanics? Nope. Uh, outside of church, do we have any relationship with Hispanics? Mm -hmm. You know, with some of our Caucasian friends. You know, do do we? Uh, and and I think it's a little different different with the, with some of our, our Caucasian friends because I think from our some of our people we see them as a, a superior culture. Yeah, we do, or, or they see themselves as a superior or dominant culture. So it's easier for a lot of our people to go in and to their culture and just join in and talk like them, jump around like them, act and that's like been them. My experience. But, but it's harder for them to come in and and, and and do that uh, and come down to our level. But if we if our culture was already similar to theirs, they, they maybe could join. Yeah. But and that that bothers me too because I don't see the white culture as the dominant culture or superior culture. No. Like that. Matter of fact, I don't I don't see uh, black culture. culture like that. Like I that. don't either. Because I I I, I, uh, I feel like both cultures have something to offer. Well, I feel like I feel like cultures can uh, always create it. I feel like you can always create a different culture. If you got uh, multi people. Uh, uh, you create a culture that fits that that benefits. You can take a little bit from everybody yeah. that can actually benefit. But I think, like you were saying earlier, you were trying to say black, uh, uh, white church, whatever. I think those are the things that stop us from having a a, a multicultural, a multicultural. Yeah. Because because when we hear multicultural, I think we hear one culture come get up under this one of the strong under, under the strong culture. Everybody y'all come join, and I think that's how that's and what that's white dangerous. people think. I think black people think that. Yeah, that's true. Now, I do have an issue with um, when we start using the word multicultural or when we start saying, when we, uh, for example, this is just random, uh, where we are now, you said earlier, politically, mm -hmm. most of what you're going to hear is from a, get in trouble, I'll just say maybe it. a Caucasian Republican mm -hmm. mindset mm -hmm. that the body of Christ should be doing this or the body of Christ should be this or the body of Christ should be that. Or um, even in systems that I've worked in or that I've been a part of, it's normally we are the body of Christ and God wants all of us to come together. He wants all of us to be together so that we can further the vision of the kingdom of God. I get it. But I've always seen on a mass scale, I'm not saying it's, this is not 100% proof, but on a mass scale, it seems to me that most of us, and I say us, African-Americans, people of color, we buy into that kingdom message and we go to be a part of the body of Christ. So we leave all of our black churches mm -hmm. and we go to these quote unquote multicultural churches um, because we're saying they have a vision for multiculturals. Um, to me, it's kind of weird that God only leads us to other people but never on a mass scale leads other nationalities or cultures to us so is it the question the questions then become is it god leading us to go to them or why is he not telling the others to come to us are those that are given this vision are they prepared for cultures and perhaps maybe we're not prepared to receive i don't know well I, when, as you was talking i was thinking uh let's look at the natural Okay. Say neighborhoods, you know. Uh, do we build? Why? Why don't we build wonderful neighborhoods? You know, everybody. You got. You got. The, you got Little Havana. Mm -hmm. Cuba's a builder. Uh -huh. You got uh, uh, Chinatown China, everywhere. Yeah. yeah. You know, but with us, when we when we elevate, we we go and want to move where we consider the superior culture is. That's we true. don't. I think we have to start building something. <laughs> that's worthy of us 
and worthy of other people that want to be a part. You know, like white kids and Asian kids don't mind being a part of the hip hop uh, mm -hmm. movement they they because they because hip hop is growing or whatever it is. But I think that's how it is. We have to, and, and don't get me wrong, we do show a level of excellence in our black churches. Uh, but I think maybe I, you know, I don't know if our I don't know if our message is is broad enough, you know. Um, and and I can't speak for other cultures anyway. But I'm just I, the, going back to just thinking. We have to bring value to our own situations a lot exactly. of times. You know what I'm exactly. saying? Uh, and and I think the measure of value, what we do, we measure it off of somebody else. Right. And so and so if they if they are if the other culture is the standard, and we trying to get up to their standard, why should they come to us? So they already because they they're gonna be setting there. a new. They already there, or they'll set another standard. We need to become standard setters. I think. That's a that's a value. I'm in point. the kingdom, yeah. in the natural, in the, yeah, in politics. I totally agree. And everywhere. We need to make what we have become in the mindset of others valuable. And the mindset a, of ourselves first. Right. And a, yeah. Because that's that's probably the biggest issue. We don't really believe in who we are. Mm -hmm. Or we don't believe in what we possess as individuals until somebody from another culture affirms that and then we were like, Dag, oh yeah. When all the while you had the greatness, nobody gave you this greatness. And that's where I used to have an issue. If I can say this, I used to have an issue with um, Caucasian ministries and white ministries, because I remember some years ago growing up at our church, we brought in, uh, and I say we, because Macedonia. Yeah, don't we, say a name. Mm -mm, no, I wouldn't dare do that. Mm -mm. <laughs> we brought in an individual mm -hmm. and they told us when the, we brought them in and they, they were known for glory meetings and glory revivals and the presence of God coming, rubies and diamonds falling all over the world. When they came to us, nothing happened. No rubies, no diamonds, no smoke clouds, no angel wings. <laughs> and then their response to us was we wasn't ready yet. That we wasn't ready. That we wasn't ready. We hadn't got to the level of worship where that produces that kind of whatever. And it was in that moment where it could have been the truth. Yeah. <laughs> But then, but I doubt it though. no, I doubt it. Mm -hmm. Then the other part was, they I instantly started feeling like, oh, because y'all still have this mentality that you're introducing us to something that you don't think we can get to without you giving it to us. I love it, and see, that's how I feel about politics. Though we mentioned earlier, yeah, but that's why we vote as a group for somebody. We we're looking for somebody who's going to give something to us. We don't look for people that represent what we already desire, That's our true. real interests. That's we true. actually think we have people that stand for our interests. I say this in one of my books, both of my books actually, mm -hmm. say, this, uh, say this, I said, uh, you know, I know our people, we believe in heroes, mm -hmm. not helpers. No. <laughs> and so I've seen politicians that what they would do, they would they would present themselves as, as helpers mm -hmm. to like wealthy people or to other cultures but they'll present themselves as heroes that's gonna come and save us and ours in our community. And we fight with each other say, oh, you better vote for them because they're gonna do this for us. They're gonna, they're gonna come and save us. And we've been voting a certain way for a long time yeah. and ain't nobody came and save us. Yeah, <laughs> we're still where we were. Right, yeah. and I'm talking both parties. No, I'm for real. I'm, I'm with you. Both parties. I'm with so, you. so yeah, we, we, we don't, um, it's, how we, it's, it's how we see, you know, uh, we do have a savior, mm -hmm. Jesus. Jesus, and that's it. Yeah, savior. But and the next that, savior is us, right? I'm saying nobody's coming, and nobody's coming. You know, the, the closest help you have outside of God is at the end of your wrist, yeah. and the end of your neck, yeah. and the end of your legs. You're right. You're right. <laughs> and I think, but I think we, as a people, we we love somebody to rescue us because it means in our minds mm -hmm. we don't have to work as hard. We want something for nothing. Not all of us. Yeah, yeah. I'm but just, you know, but we got to change our mind of what we think work is. So yeah. we think work is a job. Yeah, work no. is work. You work. I work when I don't when I when I don't have a job. Yeah. I work when I'm not at a job. Yeah, you go. You're you know, working work, right now. We working right now. Work is people don't. We I say this often now. Work is the closest thing to God, other than love. Yeah. What's the first thing we ever seen God do Create. in the Bible? In the beginning, God created. created. He worked, yep. and after those six days, He, he rested. rested. So working ain't for a paycheck. Working no. is something that we do. It's your working. purpose. It's, right, right. It's the only reason you're alive. Right. And so maybe we teach that we could we could do we can do a little more. It depends on how we see everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How we see that. You grew up working. Oh yeah. <laughs>
I will, I will with physical work. <laughs> <laughs> you know, work will, it work will kill you. Uh, it it'll, it'll, it'll make it, it'll, it'll it'll create some character in you. It, but it I does. know we say this now. People are thinking, say, "Well, we were slaves." We're not talking about no you know, working is getting things done. It is. It's being productive. Productive. Being a productive human human being. Being a productive human being. <laughs> Um, yeah, we can get on that another day. I worked. I had a lady tell me, she said, I didn't know you was doing that kind of work. I thought you was sending wind lakes. What did you thought we was doing over there? They, see, people yeah. thought, and that's mis misconceptions. But that's our culture. We think we we trying to find a way. How can we do nothing and get a lot? Violating life. How can we, how can we reap without ever sowing? Uh, it doesn't work. It doesn't happen. <laughs> it doesn't happen. She thought we had Benson and Mr. Belvedere. I was like, no. I was the pool. It was man. a black lady, a white lady. A black lady. <laughs> at, the, at my church. Stop. She didn't know that until I told the story a few weeks ago. She said, I never knew that. Wow. So y'all didn't clean your own bedroom. <laughs> you, you, you didn't take no trash out. Huh. Nope. Y'all didn't cook. I took trash out. I back in floors. Cut grass. Iron clothes, cut grass, <laughs> pull weeds, shock pools. I mean, but it work. It helps me now with where I am, mm -hmm. which is why I see as a leader, you cannot build anything without doing anything. You gotta, you gotta labor. You gotta put some labor in. My issue is with my culture mm -hmm. is this: the same work. We hate that word because what you it, there's a negative connotation on work, mm -hmm. but the same work well, or we've been labor. Exploited in work, and, we, and that's why people don't they see work like that. But we've lost the beauty of work. But go ahead, the same work. The same work we may ask. I ask you as, as an individual, hey, help me do this, blah, blah, blah. You on this team, blah, 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 mm -hmm. here. No, uh, 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 I don't want to do that. But then you'll go and produce that same labor for another culture. And then that's where I start having these issues like, okay, wait a minute. It's still the same labor. Is it because it's more doing it? Is it because it's more, is different faces doing it? What, what is the issue? We don't have a culture. See, that's the truth. We like to say we have a culture. And we say black culture. We don't have a culture. I mean, seriously. <laughs> Think about when you say this black culture. How much of that black culture it's are black. you? Look, watch this. I don't eat watermelon. Oh, wow. Now, that don't mean that it's, now we, if, a white person say, if some white person <laughs> says about eating watermelon, then that's going to be uh, 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 racist. Yeah. But then, but. But if I said I don't eat watermelon, but fruit is global. But I'm, but I'm saying, but if I said I don't eat watermelon, then it seems like, hey man, you know, you ain't black. Or if I say, like, I like fried chicken, but I don't like chicken legs. I don't, I don't like. A you chicken like chicken bread. I like the breast for sandwiches, but I don't like it fried. Only fried part I would like would be a wing or a, or a, a small thigh. Now, but I'm saying, but but it's a lot of stuff I don't that I'm not culturally uh, connected with, even growing up with. I don't eat pork chops. Wow. Not because of religious reasons, because I like I like I like some part. I like bacon. Mm -hmm. But I'm trying to say some stuff culturally. Uh I don't like uh all the music that we do. I don't like all the the ways that we do things. So I don't consider myself culturally I got you. Uh, I don't I don't what I mean by we don't have a culture, when you start talking about black people, mm -hmm. uh there's no one culture. There's no one black culture. We are a conglomeration of Right. Well, we don't expect nobody else to be this one culture. That's true. You know, but but we expect that out of all the black people in America to be one person, you know. Um, then we shocked if we're not all the same. You know, did you grow up on welfare? No. I did. My family, you know. Right. You ever spent a food stamp? I mean, your I own have. food stamp. <laughs> <laughs> I have. Yeah. You know, so I'm stuff like that. But do I want food stamps now? Some people I wish I had food stamps. I wish I never had to have food stamps. Right. I like to have so much money, I never need a food right. stamp. I like to have enough money just to buy somebody else's groceries. Right. Me I like too. to be yeah. the giver uh, yeah. and, and, and and not not the taker. Yeah. I like to be the lender, not the bar. So culturally, I don't see myself sometimes the way the rest of the culture see. And then you become an enemy sometimes of your own culture because we think we have to be this one culture. That's true. But I think, I hear people, I don't like the word when I hear people say, you got to find your tribe. Because it almost seems like you're going to just get in your little group and just get in the corner. I don't want to be just come another tribe, another culture. But I'm saying, but I think it's a good thing to create a cultural environment yeah. that people can thrive and grow in. Yeah. And and you have an ideology yeah. around that, that you can move, that you can grow with. Perhaps they're saying find your own tribe, not to isolate, mm -hmm. but to find, if you don't know your root, then it's hard for you to even accept anything else. Because you're, you still have a bit of confusion as to who am I, what am I, where do I come from? Mm 
So try finding your tribe could be good as long as you keep your mindset as I'm not trying to find my tribe so I can just isolate from every other thing in the in the earth and just buy into what my tribe is saying. That's that would be bad. Mm -hmm. That wouldn't even be uh I don't even think that's that's biblical. God is so broad. Yeah, but that's why I think people don't like labels like denomination labels. They don't. Even though I think they're necessary. I think they're necessary because really? it kind of pictures hang better in a frame. <laughs> that's good. It's like I was, I tell your your daughter and other kids they play mm -hmm. ball. I said, I'm not a I'm not a I wouldn't physically coach any kid how to play a sport. Really? As I believe I'm a, I'll be a psychological coach. We try to look for psychological advantages over other kids and other other coaches. I believe that because no matter how good you are. You got to play within a coach's system. That's true. Or the next coach won't want you on the team. That's true. So if I could be good inside of your system, I not only am I good, I make you your I make your your coaching good. That's, that's so true. so so I don't want to say, well, I don't like this this coach. He can't coach this right. That's that's not what I want to be like. I want to be successful in somebody else's system because mm -hmm. that proves that I'm I'm good either. I'm I'm a good picture. In a frame, out of a frame. Either way, mm -hmm. that that's that's good, mm -hmm. and perhaps that's how we can build a non-racially divided kingdom. Maybe starting to cultivate and and pour into an individual as who they are, not as to what they look like. Yeah, I think so. Can can that be done? I mean, do you think there's a space for that? Well, you know. Uh, or can we can I be a black leader of a black church and expect to have other cultures to come in under me? Or should I just concentrate on helping my people, my community? I think like say for instance, if I lived if, if I lived um in a rural area, a rural rural town mm -hmm. uh in the country, and and that's where I am and that's how I'm culturally set up and that's what I understand, that's what I know, that's what I'm talking to. Unless I'm invited somewhere else, I get a chance to extend where I am. Right. I think I shouldn't go after, I'm not going after white people or black people right. or, or Chinese people or whatever. Right. I'm just, this is what I have. And the people I come in contact with, I just give what I have. And I think if we do that, uh, we'll have a, a, we might not have the biggest church or the biggest ministry, right. but I think we'll have some of the most genuine connections. And I think we can actually make better disciples. I think what happens a lot of times, we try to grow. Uh, uh, we talked the other day how some people think certain only certain types of things is a good platform. Mm -hmm. You know, if what if you had to, just two people? Yeah. And those two people were very loyal and you can help yeah. those people through life and 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 fulfill God's purpose in their life and these people can live a life and be saved. I Man, you've done an amazing job. Yeah, you've done a done a great job. And I think a lot of times we don't we don't see that. For years, I used to wonder how when people in ministry, everybody wanted to be Paul, right? Two thirds of the gospel. Everybody wanted to be Jesus, the, the cornerstone of <laughs> of the of the Christian faith. Right. You know, everybody wanted to be Abraham, the father yeah. of faith. Yeah. Everybody wanted to be this great person. I used to read the scripture. I didn't mind being Titus. This is little the little little writing. Little, yeah. Everybody you know, I just want to do my part. You know what I'm saying? Uh, everybody wants That's to. Good. Everybody wants to be this person. That's not, good. and I'm not saying I don't have ambitions and I don't have goals and dreams. No, but the real but truth I'm, is, those people that have already been, mm -hmm. and I think we we never become because we're trying to be what has already been. But not only that, though, I'm saying sometimes I think we're so busy trying to be big, yeah, that that we don't even maximize being small. You know, that's why I told again. Our assignment may be to be a point finger, well, and that may be it. Well, the Bible said like this: say. Um, um, if you if you faith over little, it make you rule, rule over much. much. And what happens is people despise being faithful over something small because right. they want to be be they want to be ruled over something great. That's right. You know that's why again I, I'm gonna plug my book shamefully doing it, but that's why my second book was called How to Stop Being Poor Before Trying to Get Rich. That's good. If you give a, if, if you give a poor person a bunch of money, gonna spend it on some goofy stuff. So money's not what's gonna make you rich. We have to learn how to maximize that small space before. See, even if Paul, before he wrote two thirds of the, of the gospel, according to those six, six books mm -hmm. that we, the New Testament we have, yeah. um, according to that, instead of him writing two thirds of the gospel, the first thing he wrote wasn't two thirds yet. 
wouldn't even wouldn't the Bible wouldn't even put together. No. It's maybe two thirds of the gospel because somebody said we're gonna yeah. canonize these books. Right. But it's other, it, so the point I'm trying to say is that the numbers don't tell the whole story all no. the time. No, you're right. You're They're right. Not tell the whole story. You're right. And to your point, I think we're more impactful when we concentrate on what we've been assigned to do. And so even in my endeavor or in my thoughts and my prayers about how do we become more global um, as a ministry or as ministry people or as kingdom people, I am real clear on staying true to who I am. Mm -hmm. I don't believe in trying to become somebody else to try to do that. Switching codes. Yeah. Mm -mm. <laughs> I don't believe in that. Because I found out, excuse my French, there are niggas in every culture. Mm hmm and if we keep thinking that, what they what? Mm, mm, yeah, <laughs> there's a nigga in every culture. I, my wife and I, case in point, we moved to Pike Road seven years ago. Mm -hmm. We knew it wasn't the final stop; it's just a stop on our journey. Mm -hmm. um, but we had moved into a quote unquote okay neighborhood. But we found out the people who violate all the HOAs, it wasn't us; it was the other people. So I found out in these last seven years, it's not where you go. You're going to always run into people that are just no matter what color they are. It's probably some Asian niggas. It's probably some, <laughs> it's, they probably out there. <laughs> they got to be out there because it's a mentality. It's a mindset. It's a, I'm exempt from this stat. I'm exempt from this rule. I'm exempt from that kind of mentality exists everywhere. Um, so I'm learning to stay, I'm clear on, I'll say that to say this, I'm clear on, I'm not gonna try to become anything else mm -hmm. to try to attract people, but perhaps I can cultivate what I have. But what about become all things? <laughs> to all people. Yeah. I don't think it's meaning that. Yeah. You, it, see, uh, it means uh, being uh, able to give them all of the kingdom, the kingdom to you, again, back to what you said. If I was coming to your community, we come with a tent, we got our grills. We're going to give everybody here hot dogs and lace potato chips and frozens. Because <laughs> we thinking that's what they want. Like, I don't eat dill pickles. Right. I don't care about none of that stuff. I may want spaghetti. I may want lasagna. You come to I me. I might want a snapper. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> exactly. You bring me a snapper. The, or you bring me a, right. a fillet. And I may talk about me. Your Jesus. Yeah, we might, we might, we might <laughs> sit down and have a conversation. I have a conversation right now with a Muslim. I have one anyway. I but if you want to take me out to Rue Chris, I'm I mean, going we, with you. We, 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 have, we, we have a good conversation. I talked to Let lady. Me stop focusing. No, for real. <laughs> but but no, I think it's the. I think is. I think it's important for us mm -hmm. if we're going to be end time leaders. You cannot lead effectively. This is me. Mm -hmm. This is my position at this state of my life. I can't lead effectively if I don't know anything about anything else. Let me say something before I go too far. I was just joking about, yeah. I would talk to anybody, yeah. anytime, about anything. I, that's just who I am. Yeah. That's who I am. And you don't have to take me to Rue Chris and that like that. Yeah. I may take you. Waffle House. <laughs> but but I just want no, to say I got that. You. No, but, I got but, you. Because sometimes people take stuff just too far. Yeah, I know. I, they I just feel, take it too far. I feel you. But, but you're right. Um, we don't know enough. See, that's why I don't mind talking to other people like you were saying. We don't know enough about anything else to where we'll have our this little world we in, this little paradigm, we'll think we'll judge the whole world off of yeah. something we learned off of two Alabama blocks. Yeah, yeah. Off of two street, Court Street and, and, and Perry Street, and then we think we know the whole world. Yeah. That's, that's, <clears throat> and it's not like that. No, nah, that's scary. That's what that's my issue with the and that's how I'll say this. That is my biggest issue with us as a church. Not my local church, but the body of Christ whether it be white, black, green, or yellow. I still think we present Jesus or our approach to preaching the gospel is still it's still somewhat confined to all that we know. And that's it. Well you can only give we what forget you got. that you can only give what true. you have anyway. That's true. So I heard I heard a man say that. I, well, I read it a couple weeks ago. Mahesh Shabda. But we, he said, but we should, but, you cannot impart what you don't have. Right. But we should only have the time we born the same thing. We should have the same thing the time we die. We should have more. We should constantly be adding more to to us. You know. That's why sometimes you got to leave your neighborhood. Sometimes you got to leave your. I ain't trying to leave permanently. You got no. to be able to. And when you leave, you can't be looking down on another neighborhood no. or looking like. I don't we don't like these. Or even yeah. you arrive, when you go visit. Some people can leave a bad, a poor neighborhood and go to a rich neighborhood. They more in awe than looking to say those houses are built out of the same sheetrock, sticks, same, and mud. It's only that's that's worth more because somebody said it was. You know, uh, 
you know, they, we can't see it. So we got to be able to broaden our, our horizon. That's why I don't have a problem talking to anybody. See, because if your faith can be thrown so easily by talking to somebody who ha who disagrees with you, you don't have that faith anyway. You know, yeah, you, you're right. You said some two minutes ago, and I think it's the mandate that we all miss in Genesis. God tells Adam and Eve, be fruitful and multiply. And multiply. Mm -hmm. So I think we're a lot. Uh, we violate a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. We we're not fruitful. We're not productive, and we don't believe in multiplication well, well, unless you know, it becomes unless it means dollars. What what <laughs> right? Let's be, yeah, I was like, but I know I have too many friends of mine that became pastors or bishops or whatever, and I don't know if they're thinking like that. But it, it feels to me like well, these people may have been, you know, a little more go getter. Seems like now they're just trying to hold it in the road. Maintain. They're just trying to keep it. You know. Jesus said that I will build my church. Yeah. The gates of hell should not prevail yeah. against it. Yeah. So sometimes people stop being people trying to hold a church involved. They got to come up with a new gimmick for the church, a new this to try and get people in. And the thing about it is the thing that got them that position in the first place, they're not doing that thing. Right. No more. Right. They're and not that doing nothing. And I don't want to do nothing that people can neutralize me from being as effective as I am before I take the, the job. That's true. As you, and you become neutered and then you become almost typecast. Yeah. And I think maybe that's why I had a problem with wanna take positions in church. I feel you. Because I feel like I I'll be caged in or pinned pinned up. I feel you. And then I'm then I won't believe I'll be able to I just cause inside of my mind and my spirit is just so big. It's so, so big. And I've seen times where I've gotten typecast where inside of my mind got so small. Mm-hmm. It got so small. I remember, uh, you remember Marshall before he passed. I remember yeah. telling him one time, I said, Marshall, man, I say, I don't have uh, any ambitions. I just, I just can see nothing. I just like, wow. everything was just, the world just, I had nothing I could reach for. I'm just living. Wow. And then I remember my, I can see when it just blow up, boom, everything's just so big. Everything is possible. I want to do everything. And I don't want to get in positions that'll take me to a place where, not only my world I live in out here is small, mm -hmm. but the world that's on the inside of me is small. That's right. And so I think that's what's wrong with us as a people. We have to grow. We have to become larger on the inside. We have to become larger on the inside. That's really good. And I think that's probably my fight now because I'm thinking within myself away from going back to the, what we started at the top. I don't want people to walk away thinking, I'm saying, <clears throat> that black people can't sit on the white people mm -hmm. or white people should go sit on black people. I think what I'm saying is we need to reserve or we need to within ourselves as individuals, we need to learn how to really hear God and not perceive anything that God says through our history. Um, our history tells us that the other cultures, Caucasian culture is superior, mm -hmm. uh, that they have so much more to offer, that they operate in excellence, that they do things right, quote unquote. So I think with that mindset, Many of us say we want to go be a part of these entities or these systems or these churches or these businesses that are controlled or led by the other culture because traditionally we think or has been proven maybe in some cases that they just do things better, whatever the better is. Mm -hmm. So my fight now within myself is I know I have something. I can talk to my neighbors all the time. Mm -hmm. I've had several neighbors um, to move in and out of the community since we've been there that we actually build some type of relationship with Got a new couple just came in now. So I'm learning to build a relationship with them and I'm finding out that I do have something to offer another culture because it's not even so much Jesus. It's, it's, it's life. It's humanity. It's, this is how you can do this. This is what wisdom is. And wisdom is not germane to a culture. It, right. It's not just for but, black people. But, to watch. watch this. We actually think, you think what you had was to another culture. That was just another person that was another color than you. They might not be a whole other culture. You're right. You know, You're that's right. I, that, so, so, yeah, so that goes to the race. Mm -hmm. And so, and that's, I think we see everything uh, like that. And and it do exist. But I think if we don't see it like that, the reason you was able to talk to that person, y'all had a line of communication that's what I'm saying. I don't want to cut off lines of communication with different types of people because we have, we're different. Yeah. You know, cause the Bible says, how can two walk together Except unless they agree? agree. Uh, but that don't mean I had to agree on everything. No, I could disagree with you about so many and things. And we the same color. And, and I could, right. And I can, but I, but I only can ride with you mm -hmm. on the things that we agree about. That's right. That's right. 
So then the question is, does racism exist? Oh, or yeah. why does it exist? You think it exists? <laughs> yes, yes. But, I mean, not in a nation, not in not in our not in our nation, but in the church, does it exist? Oh yes. Reason it exists in the church because it exists in people. But now, again, people will get mad at me when I I, I don't really like to do this. But I don't believe racism is the factor, the main factor that stops us from achieving anything. People say it's systematic racism. There were greater systems of racism and prejudice that existed before and people still achieved. Yeah. The Jews have proven that. I'm talking black people well, yeah. still in this country yeah. still achieve more than some of us do now. Some of us got more degrees and make more money in better situations than mm -hmm. People 200 years ago, black people, Frederick Douglass. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and we won't, we can't even reach their levels. That's true. Because we tell ourselves some systematic system stopped us. It may try to slow you down, but, but it, it can't, can't stop, stop you. you. It didn't stop those people. No. They had slavery. You still had people that escaped slavery. Yeah. You still had people that rose up out of every situation. So I don't like using that as an excuse for us not to achieve. So you think we've been robbed of our will? That will. I think we've that, handed it over. Okay. I think we've handed it over. I think we have been sometimes forced to give it up. We've been robbed. You could have been robbed of it, but once you know what's that? Once a thief is found, right? Yeah. <laughs> you got to pay back. Yeah. You know. So I don't like people saying, "Yeah, it's a man. It's a trap. They got a trap in there." But yet we call it the trap house. The trap house. Right. That's a dumb rat <laughs> to go into the trap. And right. You know, it's a trap. Right. Right. I don't, that's that's in my mind. Right. You know, for people. I think. So, culture our culture let's do it for the culture i'm stuff, a lot of stuff in our what we call our culture is so toxic yeah. whether it's our church culture it is. whether it's our, it you is. know we talk about uh, other things and our culture black church mm -hmm. we haven't been a lot of that's the only place a lot of people have gotten respect and that's the only place people have been somebody mm -hmm. you know most people don't know how to be somebody outside of church exactly. and that's why they get offended so fast in church exactly or that's what come uh at the white church you can call them you can call the pastor brother so-and-so a pastor mm -hmm. but we got to have all this stuff because this is our identity and we yeah. we're taking some of my identity and so what we do we forget to get these genuine relationships we forget a pastor uh i think a lot of i'm sure i'm, I'm not a pastor I'm not a senior pastor but right. just listening i think a lot of them are so alone because they cage themselves from the people. That's true. You know, I think you, I, people want to be touchable. I don't want a pastor that's full of sin so I can be touchable. Right. That, that, that I can relate to him. Yeah, no, no. Nah. I want a pastor that I can talk to. I know his name. I know his number. Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. We, that's good. Uh, we need advice. We need help. We, we got that part, but we don't, but we don't want somebody who's just too lofty. That is, it's the, it's the pew versus the pulpit. Right. And then you never grow. Even if you're growing people, you're not growing in, in that kind of fellowship yeah. where you have that thing you really need. So here, I keep picturing the projects. Mm -hmm. Here's a, I told a lady this last Sunday, I said, um, perhaps we're intimidated in certain spaces mm -hmm. as a black church. And for us, we do feel like we're doing the work of God if we go and feed the poor and help the whatever. Um, but what about the people who don't need food, who don't need clothing? They don't need you to pay their light bills. Mm -hmm. What is the gospel that we give them? Cause you know, those are souls too. Mm -hmm. And I think so long the church has, and I can't say, I can't say the church, the black church. We're good as long as we look like we're strong enough to help somebody in the project. Oh yeah. But how do I go get, these million dollar lawyers that's about to blow their brains out. But so but, do I bring myself up to a certain Now I'm gonna get in trouble. All right. I ain't gonna really get in trouble, but I'm gonna get in trouble. Yeah. yeah. Well, see, we can in the black church or in church, you can manipulate people below you to give you all their money and everything else. Yeah. We don't think these some of these people is as gullible as some of these that's people that truth. don't know know better. That's a real truth. Because to be honest with you, here's the truth. If you were it's a thing to say, would you go up, would you rather get a million dollars or, or some money from Jay-Z or eat dinner with him? Most people rather take the money. I told God, I said, I, take the dinner. years ago, I would take the money. But then if I took the money, I would have just spent it and wind back up in somebody's hands who know how to make money. I said, I would rather take the dinner. 
I make it get glean some information from this guy. He's a billionaire. Yeah. I may learn something about money. Yeah. Or I make it become his friend. Yeah. And if I become his friend, I'm not gonna ask my, I don't beg my friends that got money for money. No. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. If I if I was smart, I was I would try and find out how much the dinner costs if I had to sell something mm-hmm. and I'd pay for his dinner. There you go. It could have been a ten thousand dollar dinner. I'll see could I pay for it. There you go. I want I wanna I wanna have relationships with people there. Again, I'm plugging my book again. Sorry. But well, I'm writing I'm writing a new book called What's Your People Credit Score? Yeah. But oh, that's gonna be good. I wanna have I have a direct connection to somebody like that. Yeah. Even if I couldn't get him saved. That's stronger. I have somebody that I can talk to mm. that can give me advice that, that I, I got access to a different pla- I don't know. See, we talk about say rulers of of, of um he say that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Right. But but against what principalities See, we think about we really think that was talking about devils right i was talking about what it said principalities rulers of dark places in what in high places high places in where it was somebody in, in this earth. world in yeah, this in earth. Earth. It says in world. well who's got these high places who's these rulers they're here that's what we wrestle against you have influence in some of these places yeah we crazy that's, that's what we want to have influence with that's true I would love to. I would love to eat dinner with Jay Z. That's that's really good. <laughs> so then that means I need to prepare myself for those moments that may present themselves. Can't be stupid though. Can't be fussing and arguing. One guy told me he talked to a billionaire. He ate dinner with him and he he dominated the conversation. The billionaire dude? No, he the guy who wasn't a billionaire. No, he's a nut. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you get to certain tables, you learn how to listen. You learn how to listen. I've been in some crazy rooms. Um, younger, I think when I was a little bit younger, I was in a lot of different spaces. And in our, my world, it's preachers and people, quote unquote, who are strong in the faith or whatever. And I'm, and I noticed when I come into those spaces, I turn into a little boy. Mm-hmm. Even now, that's something I fight. I fight with in my chronological years. I'm 46 mm-hmm. in a couple of weeks. But when I come to certain rooms, I lose my 46ness. But you are a little boy in so many instances. You're true, true. And I guess when I turn 85 and somebody's 100, I'll still be a little boy. Well, one thing about children, I taught children. I'd rather teach children than adults. Adult can not know how to read or drive, really and, he, and he'll act like he can because he's trying to cover his ego that he can't. That's really a good. child will ask all kind of questions, will, will glean and soak up so much from you. And that's really I, think, good. I think that's a good thing. You yeah. know, I like to talk, Yeah, but I mean some places I don't talk in. Right. In some places I don't talk in places like that i'm i want to find out why am i here right. you know how, how, how did i get that, that guy that guy he's there why am i here right. what's my place here so you know i don't know but we're gonna we go it's been we it's time cool. far spent we All were right. really talking about racism yeah but it's hard to talk about racism and don't talk about economics because really i think that's what we're fighting this race is about a a, a, a competition for resources and we don't really that's want true. we don't really want to admit it. That's why that's they the use the word race. It's a yeah. competition. And um <laughs> but I think our people have to we have to grow up and be men in business. We could be children when we're learning. That's right. But we be we be men in business. So is that is that are you saying that's how we dispel that's how we can begin how, to dispel? Right. That's good. If you want to deal with white people in your church, just like you invite the other ones, invite the white ones, but be about business. And when they come even if we like the whole church for 10 hours, yeah. they might not like to do it. You might have to compromise yeah. until these people get grown till you build another culture where all of them might want to. You might not right. be having church 10 hours. Right. You know, uh, like I want to teach about giving so much, but I, I won't do giving teaching right now because you talk about giving people that you're trying to take something yeah, from. Yeah, that's how they We have to teach people to trust the Bible, that the Bible is correct first. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Then you can tell people what all the benefits of God because the Bible said if you come to God, you must first believe that he that is. He is. And not only that he is, but, that he's a but he's a rewarder, not a herder, yeah. not a killer, not a destroyer, not waiting to get you because you're bad, a, a rewarder of them They're that diligent. diligently seek him. Yeah. And so people don't have faith in the goodness of God yeah, you're right. more than they have the fear of the wrath of God. They, right. <laughs> so we want t- people to trust that God is, yeah. that what he has for us is best. Yeah. You know, we want people, to, white people to believe that the gospel in our mouth, it works for them. It works for, for us. That's true. We want black people to realize the gospel in our mouth ain't lesser Mm-mm. than the gospel in some white guy's mouth. We want you to know the guy in the three-piece suit got a Bentley. The gospel in his mouth ain't no more real or potent 
than the gospel in my mouth when I can live in a, in a smaller area. Mm-hmm. I can have less members. Mm-hmm. And I mm-hmm. think once we do that, you know, we got a chance of reaching more people, period. I agree. I agree. Anything you'd like to say before we leave? No, that was great. I'm I'm, I'm good. Uh, now I want to enjoy being in the space. I enjoy it. I want to do. I want to do it a lot more. I want everybody to know, like this is Channel 13, and we this is a, this not only going to be here on Facebook or whatever. It's on. Um, it's a podcast, and I want you to excuse me. I would like for you to uh, comment on here, share with your yeah. friends, yeah. share this with you know. Let a lot of people look in. These aren't the only ones we'll do. We'll do a lot of these. And it's not only podcasts. It's going to be on Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, uh, Amazon uh, Music, and Audible. That's yeah. where it is. And uh, tell us a little bit about your book before we leave and where we can get it. Yeah, One Conversation with the Serpent. Uh, it's it's an easy read. And it's, it's it, I think it deals with, um, for the lack of a better description, just the mentality of of myself as an individual i'm using myself we as a people and how just one conversation with or being in one wrong space can just really alter the life of an individual um you can get it on amazon you just t- simply put that in one conversation with the serpent i believe it'll change your life it changed my i've been reading it i've read it over and over again and every time i read it it turns into something else or it evolves um i've had a couple of people tell me that they really enjoy it i'm not a book person yeah. I don't mean not writing. I've never been reader. Oh yeah, and I read. Okay. I just I've never been a a first page to yet. S- yeah. Yet. Yeah. I hear you. <laughs> I hear you. But I'm coming into a space now where I understand the importance of reading. I do. Um but I do also understand the importance of reading something that is what I need. Again, I don't need a cheeseburger book if I'm trying to figure out how to make hot dogs. So, but I think the one conversation with the serpent, um, it's it's vast, it's easy to read, but it'll cover every. I think everybody can grab something out of it. So go grab that off of Amazon. Right, one conversation, conversation with the serpent. O n e or the number one. O n e. O n e. O n e. Conversation with the serpent. Yeah. Leo Leo Lewis. Yep. I mean, we had a good time having here today. Appreciate it. We're gonna have you back. I hope I can get you to come back. 10 more times I'll you, come with you call me uh, I'll come and we, we get some better topics uh, I want to say better topics some other topics yeah. some mm-hmm. other topics perhaps your viewers have topics that they much want to yeah and if you have a view if you have questions uh, for Bishop uh, Leo uh, right here just just put them in the comments put them in the comments and uh, we'll we'll come back and address them you know because what I one of my desires for Channel 13 Channel 13 is really not a religious podcast people didn't really know this right. but it is kind of where life kind of cross and intersects with religion. Right. So channel 13 could be about, we can have about anything. So you, and anyway, with all the stuff I do, uh, other than my Bible teachings, yeah. it's about anything. Because be honest with you, if your religion is only inside your church or in your head, then God bless you. Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, uh, even if you're, if you're from another faith, I'll talk to you. Yeah. I mean, I ain't talking about another denomination. You could be from a t- whole nother type another faith right. i would talk with you and this is not this is to me i think this is a safe place it is this is a place where we because we want to see we want to not only see uh what's happening in life to come we want to see life improved here where we are where we are right now and um because if we don't have respect for each other and we don't understand each other we can't reach or teach anything to each other exactly all right today all right. our guest I appreciate again it. bishop leo yep. lewis jr and i'm your host marcus v brown this has been Another episode of Channel 13. See you next time. Peace. My name is Marcus Mann. Don't forget the V in the brown. They call me 13, but I ain't the one to crown.